In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. So the Lord came, so the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, listen, sin lies at the door. And its desire, and its desire is for you. But you should rule over it. Rule over what? Sin, right? Okay. Now Cain talked with Abel his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Now I want you to see something here. This is the first time outside of God that a human or a person shed blood. The first time that blood was shed in the Bible, God did it. But God did it for a sacrifice. It's different. This brother killed his other, killed his brother, murdered. That was murder. So when God shed blood in the Garden of Eden, that was based on a sacrifice. But Cain murdered Abel. You got it? Now, why did Cain kill Abel? Sacrifice. Guess why he killed him? Cain killed Abel over Abel's offering. So the first time that man killed a man was over money. The first time man killed a man was over money. It was over money. Now you understand why it says that the love of money is the root of all. Money's not evil, but this shows that a brother killed another brother because one brother chose to give more than he did. And look, he was warned about it. God said, hey, 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 hey. I'm rejecting you because you're rejecting me. But if you accept me, I'll accept you. You, you follow? In the church, the, I think, I believe in the church, the toughest topic is money. It really is. And that's the reason why we are financially illiterate, because as, as a leader, we, are, we don't know how to speak to the congregation about money. Because the first thing people think is they don't need the money or why they asking for money so much. Or The good thing about us is we only take up an offering once a week. Once a week. We don't do it four, five, seven times. We only do it once a week. You follow? But listen, when we take up an offering, do you guys not see the fruit of it? If you don't see the fruit, then don't, then don't respond. But do you see the fruit of what we're doing? Yes. Are we not in the community? Yes. Are we not helping people? Yes. Okay, well, that's the reason why we need it. We need, we need your funds to keep it going. If your funds don't come, then guess what? Praying about it, won't, it ain't going to change it. In other words, your funds are needed for us to function because just as your, light, your lights are on in your house and you have gas in your car, that took money. So don't be mad at the lead servant when I come and say, we're doing a campaign for a million bucks. Why? We need a building. Amen. We have bills. And we're helping people. You guys help to put a smile on 16 kids' faces. Amen. Guess what? The gift that they got may be the only gift that they will receive. So what we did for these children is giving them a sense of hope. When we go out and feed the homeless, man, that may be the only food they have all week. So it's needed. You got it? And, but it also shows that when we don't give, then things around us die. It's not that, it's not that Cain couldn't give. Cain did not give his best. Now, this is what I want you to see. When you don't give, sin is sitting at your door. Did you hear what I said? 
Those out there on social media, I'm talking to you too, because you're part of us in this, in this sanctuary. When you don't give, sin is sitting at your door. I'm just giving you the truth, okay? All right. So it's time for the offering. All right. Praise Woo! God. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's time for the offering. I'm not into convincing, but I'm into giving the truth. All right? So listen, there are several ways you can donate to us here. If you need an envelope, raise your hands, and one of our kingdom greeters will give you an envelope. And I know y'all, listen, I know you guys here and also on social media, you're not going to have Sky outdo you. Because Sky already, Sky already gave her tithes and offering. Praise God. <laughs> All right, so uh, you can text the word GIVE to 804. 348-8300. Text the word GIVE to 804-348-8300. You can also give on Cash App, dollar sign Fit Kingdom. On Cash App, dollar sign Fit Kingdom. Go to the website, fftkgm.org, and um, you can give there directly from your bank account as well. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God gives seed to the sower. We are sowers and reapers. And we are going to live according to the harvest and not financial miracles. We ain't got time for the lottery system up in here. If you sow a seed, God, God said he gets seed to the sower. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So what we're doing is tithes and offerings. You know your tithe is 10% and the offering is anything over that. And we're doing this for one reason. We're doing it to bring structure to our financial life, okay? Amen. That's the only reason why. We ain't got no curses and all that going on. It's between you and God. I ain't got time for that. I ain't con I, I'm not into convincing. I'm into, I'm into educating. And then you decide from there. And whatever you do. And whatever that is. Not just giving, but your life as well. All right, 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds. And then we're going to pray over it and give you this rhema word that I have from the Lord. And I believe that uh, it's going to set you free and empower you even more. All right. Those here and those on social media, grab your offering or, you know, the means that, that you gave by and, and have us uh, stand up with me, please. And let's let's uh, let's confess what we confess here. All right. You ready? All right. Come on. Plant. Come on. Shift. Come on. Protect. Yeah. Yeah. See. Yeah. Yeah. That's it right there. So we're going to plant the seed, right? Come on, plant. We're going to shift. All right, because look, 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 when we shift now, we go into harvest mode. And now we're going to protect with the right attitude. Amen? All right, one more time. Ready? Plant. Come on, shift. Come on, protect. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, repeat after me. Because I am a sower, God multiplies my seed. Because I believe, I receive what God has for me. Because I am good ground, I never lack. Because I live by faith, I prosper in what I do. Because I am a curse breaker, my family is blessed. Because I walk in victory, I am a winner. Because I am a lender, I am not a borrower. Because God is, so am I in this earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. 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 Okay, guys. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to, today is our family day, so everyone stays in the sanctuary. Holy Spirit, I yield to your wisdom and your counsel. I thank you that you are here. I thank you that you would speak to me. Give me the ability to flow as you would have me to flow. 
We welcome miracle signs and wonders. None of me and all of you. I decrease that you may increase. We welcome the apostolic anointing and the prophetic anointing is over this house. None of me and all of you have your way. Give me a revelation from the throne of grace. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So we're doing part five of preparing for 2023. And uh, what the Lord gave me was, he said that he wants me to uh, continue to uh, the rest of this month here to prepare us for um, 2023. And so what he wants me to do is to continue to teach um, on preparation for 2023 so that we can hit the floor running when the strike, when, when the clock strikes 12. Amen. OK, so I want you to, to see this. I got this word this morning as I was getting myself together. He gave me this 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 word here. And so I said, OK, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I, I just take these other message and I just put it to the side whenever you want me to share it. So I'm going to share what he gave me. And it's a revelatory word. And we just thank the, uh, the our media team for being on point as we go forth uh, doing something off the off, the, you know, without planning for it. Now, do you notice that in the Garden of Eden, right? When God created man, humanity, do you notice that in the Garden of Eden, there weren't no police officers or, or state troopers? There weren't no uh, no one out there uh, trying to keep keep the law. Do you notice that? You, do you notice that in the, in the Garden of Eden, it was just it was just man and God. And so what God showed me was that. That man was designed to govern himself. OK, you were you were designed to govern yourself and you, you govern yourself according to to your your consciousness, your your awareness. All right. And so, like I stated earlier today, we find people more conscious or aware during the end of the year. So things become a whole lot more nicer. People become more nicer and and things slow down and people just change. And so the difference is between this time and the rest of the year is there's a level of awareness. And so that's the reason why people respond and act differently, because we are more aware of God who is always there. But we acknowledge him more during this time because the world has scheduled this time to be a season of giving. But we have to stop buying into that. And understand that January is also the season of giving. And so it's February and March and April and May and June and July. And so we got to keep doing this. But what happens is we're not governing ourselves as we should. And we are allowing the system to govern us. You got it? Now, I want you to hear something. And this is maybe, maybe shocking to you. That in all reality, we have never been judged for anything we have done a day in our lives. Let me let me sit down. Because this is going to get good. No human <clears throat> in the history of humanity. No human has ever been judged by God. Not one human. Adolf Hitler. Anybody you name. No one, no man has ever did anything in this earth and God judged them for it. Not one. Ashley, pull up for me John chapter 8 verse 11 in the New King James Version. No person, you have never been judged by God one day in your life. This is the story of Jesus with the woman who got caught in the act of adultery. Okay? All right, look what it says. The Lord asked her, where are your accusers, right? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Now, 
I want you to see something here. This woman was caught in the act <clears throat> of adultery. And the law said that she should die because she was caught in sin. Amen? All right. So Jesus, she's put on trial in front of everybody in broad daylight. All right? But the people who came to put her on trial were not qualified to kill her. You got it? So when Jesus said, anyone who's without sin cast the first stone, everyone dropped their stones because they all had sin. And they dropped it, I believe it, I believe it was from the youngest to the oldest. I believe so in scripture. So anyway, that's a different teaching, but I, I don't have time for that. Lord, I wish, boy, don't let me get started. All right, so everyone dropped their stone. And now what she was left with, pay attention now, she was left with Jesus, okay? And Jesus said to her, I don't, I don't judge you. Now, he could have, but he didn't. But she was judged, but not by him. Pay attention now, okay? All right? What judged her during her trial? It wasn't Jesus the man. It was Jesus the word. All right. She was confronted by the word of God in flesh form. But the flesh form of the word did not judge her. She was judged by the word that was written. You got it? So she said, he said to her, I don't condemn you. I can't condemn you in flesh form. But I'm going to condemn you according to the word. I'm not going to do the judging. Listen, what I'm going to do is have the word judge you. See, let, let, me, let me share something with you. God is not in heaven saying, ha, I caught you. Oh, I saw that. Boom, lightning. Boom, thunder. Boom. No, he's not doing that. God has an operating system in the earth that works for him. And guess what it does? It works for you as well or works against you. You decide if the operating system of the world works for you or against you. You got it? Based on what you do or don't do. You don't need a police officer to tell you the right thing. Okay, listen. If I was to tell you, watch me on this, and this is good for the kingdom kids to hear too because you guys can really grow from this. If I was to tell you, hey, take your hand and put it over that fire, would you do it? Why not? It's going to burn, right? It's going. But what tells you not to do it? Your conscience, your awareness, your awareness of pain. Your awareness of pain would not have you take your beautiful fingers and put it over the fire. Okay, okay. So now, what happens to that fire when it comes to you in the form of saying, go into the store and steal? See, you have an awareness of natural fire, but not an awareness of spiritual fire. So the awareness of natural fire supersedes your awareness of spiritual fire. But that don't make sense. Because just as you will get burned naturally, you will get burned spiritually. Listen, listen. It tells us in Proverbs what person will put fire into their lap and say that their bosom won't get burnt. You follow what I'm saying? What I'm saying is, okay, the word that I'm talking to you about today is conviction. Okay? Con say conviction. Online, write the word for me if you don't mind. Conviction in the comment section. I need you engaged online. All right? I want you engaged. This is what I want you to hear. Write down this statement. For 2023... Your convictions must outweigh your desires. Boy, y'all ain't shot on that one. Y'all, boy, y'all missed a good opportunity right there, boy. I tell you, 
You missed a good one right there. That was a shout right there. If you ever, if you ever would have shouted, it should have been right. I should have gotten a big fat amen right there. <laughs> See, I'm trying to help you for 2023. All right. Here's the thing. Okay. God put a state trooper, a police officer inside of you. His name is called Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Watch me. And he is quite an officer. You know why? Because he can see what you can't. And he knows what's coming. And he will tell you, don't do it. He will give you a snapshot of what will happen. Not might. Uh, it, that may happen. But if I do it the right way, then it won't happen. Well, you can't do right wrong. I'm sorry. You can't do wrong right. That's it. You can't do wrong right. You can't say, I'm going to do something wrong, but I'm going to do it right at the same time. I remember when I was a drug dealer, don't stop looking at me the wrong way now. Don't start looking at me the wrong way. When I was a drug dealer, I met a guy who told me, he said, man, he said, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay inside. And then I'm going to come out when it's real late because at that point, I'm more hidden. And they won't be able to really catch me because I'm more on the low at night. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the, rationale, the rationale of this guy, man. And you couldn't tell me he wasn't right. So anyway, he ended up doing 25 years. <laughs> because there is no way to do the wrong thing the right way. It's not like, it's not like because it's nighttime, there is no light. Because the light always pierces through the darkness. Okay, if a man's job, now pay attention, if a man's job is to sit down all day long, let's say on the highway, a state trooper, if a person's job is to sit in their car all day long, sip coffee, eat donuts, waiting for you to do the wrong thing, what are the chances of you being caught? 100%. You know why? While he's sitting down, Drinking his coffee, eating his donut, there's a machine called a radar machine waiting for you. So he's not even working. The system is working for him to catch you in your wrong while you think you're right. Somebody say wisdom. There is a machine that God has in the earth. And watch me. The machine is working for God. In all ways, there is not one way that that machine, the machine is on right now. In 2023, for us to see difference, we must do one thing right. You ready? Govern yourself. You got to have a level of governing that God would say, man, you are, you are a great citizen. You are a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. And if you don't know how to govern yourself, in other words, children, let me talk to my kingdom children. If your parents tells you not to have a, a social media page, let me talk to you. Let me get into your world. I'm looking at all the kingdom children. That's you. That's you. That's you. If your, if your parents tells you that you, can't ha you cannot have an Instagram page and you have snuck and gotten an Instagram page, you have broken the law. Guess what happens? Eventually, you will be caught. And guess what? The thing that you really like the most will be taken away. You know what's that? Your cell phone. You can't break the law and think that you're not going to have a penalty. Let's go to Joshua 1-8, please. New King James Version. Is this okay? Joshua 1-8. It says here, this book of the law. Now, what book is he referring to? What book? The Bible. 
Say the Bible. Okay. This book of the law. Now, I'm going to stay here for one second. Okay. If they say, if, it's, if it says this book of the law, it must mean that you are a citizen of the book. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. It says that when you are in Rome, you do what the Romans do. You got it? Because you respect the law of the land. You got it? So God is saying this book of the law, not the book of any other land, but the book of the kingdom. All right. So the book of the kingdom shall not depart from your lips. Got it. So if he's saying that this is a law book, then I want you to change your citizenship. You're not a citizen of America. He's saying you are a citizen of heaven. Are you following me? You are a citizen of a, of a, higher, a higher country, a higher nation. And what he's saying is, in this country and in this nation, there are laws. You got it? And this is the law that you, he wants you to have in your mouth how often? Day and night. Because if you don't have it in your mouth, then you're breaking the law. You got it? And he wants it in your mouth because if you break the law, there's a penalty attached to breaking laws. You follow? Okay. So he says, meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to how much? How much? That means 99.9% of it is still wrong. We don't, we don't mix it. He says do it all. That is written in it, right? For then what happens? What happens? Talk to me, guys. And what else? Your way is prosperous. And then you're going to have not success, but what? So that must mean there's bad success. <laughs> you follow? See, the reason why he wants the book of the law in your mouth is because he wants to raise your awareness. Okay? And when he, when he raises your awareness, what we have is a stronger level of conviction. And what conviction does is it keeps you safe. It keeps you from going in the wrong direction. Listen, inside of you, there is a smoke detector. And what it does is it goes off before the fire starts. You know, the smoke detector does that. It tells you about the smoke. But if you ignore the smoke detector, you're going to find yourself right dead smack in the fire. I'm talking to you today about allowing the word of God to be your conviction. If you don't allow the word of God to be your conviction, let me say it this way. Let me say it this way. If you ever want to make a move or a decision, if you ever want to say something, if you ever want to respond, react a certain way, and you feel something stopping you, stop. If you, listen, listen, if you want to do something and you don't have a hundred percent peace in it, don't do it. Because that's your indication that that's the wrong thing to do. You follow? It's God on the inside of you doing the same, talk to me. Let me give you a picture. We are in the Garden of Eden. We're in the garden. And Adam and Eve are at the tree that belongs to God. And Adam and Eve, oh my God, Jesus, man, okay, this is, this is, okay. And Adam and Eve are at this tree. Where is God? He's at the tree also. Okay, 
Because he says, very good, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So God is there also. But why did they not hear him? Because once you break a law, you stop hearing the voice of God. I can prove it to you. You ready? Okay. Actually, take me to Romans chapter 1, verse 28, please, in the New King James Version. You guys liking this? Okay. Okay, good. Romans 1, 28. It says here, it says here, and, and even as they did not like to retain God, and their knowledge, God gave them over to a what? The base mind to do those things which are not fitting. Now, let me, let me explain what's going on. <clears throat> God, God is talking. He's talking. Because he's always talking to you because he wants to protect you. He loves you so much that he would never leave you not, not hearing from him. But at some point, this is what I want you to hear. At some point, God has to give into your will so you can wear God out. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> I want you to say that. Also on social media, say, I can Wear God out. You can wear him out. I, I, think, I, think we have, I think we need to say that one more time. Say, I can wear God out. You can, you can wear God out to the point where he would take you and say, I'm going to give in to you. I'm going to give you what you want. A reprobate mind. Now, you know what that means? Let me help you. Now, this is graphic, but I got I to gotta show you this, okay? We're having a real good cookout. We, we are having a cookout, let's say, dead smack in the month of uh, August, New Beginnings, the eighth month. Praise God. We're having a, a cookout in the month of August, and they're cooking uh, uh, steaks and, and, and chicken and whatever you like, and then someone goes into the cooler and comes out with a brain. And what they do is, yeah, look at me as I say brain. They take that person's brain or soul and they put it on the grill. And they cook it to the point where now the brain is pink originally, but now it becomes charcoal black. They cook the brain. And what they do is take that brain and put it right back into the mind or the body of the individual it came from. Okay, so your brain, a person who has... A reprobate mind is a person's brain who is on the charcoal grill cooking, well done on all, all sides. So what happens is the nerves in the brain or, or the soul or the sensitivity of the soul is now cooked. So you don't feel wrong any longer. Let's go to second. Let's go to Isaiah chapter five, verse twenty. As I hear God speak to me in the Holy Ghost, praise God. Let's go to Isaiah chapter five, verse twenty, please. As I flow through the Holy Spirit, praise God. I like it. I like it when I flow like this. It's, it's a better feel. Am I? Am I in it? Let's go to Isaiah five and twenty, because this is where we are today. You laughing at me, mom? You, 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 it's tickling you, right? My mom gets tickled. You know, I got saved. She, she, she walked me through salvation. She's probably saying, this boy, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. This heathen, I can't believe he's doing this. I know, mom, I can't believe it either. It tickles her every time. She cries and laughs every Sunday, I promise. Woe to those. Listen, she cries and she laughs and cries every Sunday. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Listen, woe to those who call what? Evil good. Talk to me, guys. And good evil. Right? Who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Come on now. Who put bitter for sweet 
and sweet for bitter. Guess what? We are in that time right now. Man, do you know how many people are looking at bad and saying, no, that ain't bad? I don't care. Let me tell you something. I don't care what those crooked politicians say. If it's not in the book of God, it ain't law. And I ain't judging nobody. But I'm telling you straight up, abortion is wrong. It's murder. Period. Call it what you want to call it. It's ain't judgment. But somebody must be bold enough to tell somebody the truth. Being married to the same sex is wrong. It ain't judgment. Because I got some gay folks in my house. But it's wrong. Period. This ain't judgment. If it goes against the book, it goes against what God says, period. You know God's the equal opportunist. He really is. And if he wanted the same sex to be married, he would have gave Adam a choice of Steve. He would have said, Adam, here's Eve and Steve. Which one do you want? Adam didn't have a choice. Because Adam and Steve cannot produce and multiply. Amen to that. I'm telling you that the law book that we have supersedes any law that they have. And the reason why this war is going crazy is they have the wrong laws. I'm going to go deeper into laws as we progress. <clears throat> Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, please. I'm almost done, okay? Is this okay? Okay. Praise God. Look what it says here. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is what? So it's not dead. And the reason why the word of God is not dead is Jesus has been resurrected. When, when, when y'all get wisdom, y'all don't, don't, don't even act. <laughs> Boy, y'all acting like this is just regular teaching. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Yes, the reason why the word is living is because Jesus is alive. <laughs> if he didn't raise, they cannot say the word is living. Mm -hmm. They would have to say the word is dead. <laughs> you got it? Okay. So the word or Jesus, the Jesus of God is living and powerful and sharper than what? A two-edged sword. That means that when the word goes out, you see, I want y'all to hear something. That if it cuts you, it cut me first. You follow what I'm saying? In other words, I'm not exempt from what I'm talking to you about. If I could be honest with you, I am held at a higher dimension. See, you may have a little wiggle room. You may have, see, see, you may do something and you can, you can probably get a little wiggle out of it. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you something. I've come to a place of, I ain't got no wiggle, no room. I, I promise you that a lot of times I'll be like, this ain't fair. But I've called at a higher dimension because how can I come before you and I'm living a life that's contrary to what I'm talking about. I have such a conviction that I refuse to go wrong. Now, sometimes wrong pops in my mind, but I said, no way. No way. It's there. Sometimes I want to call somebody and curse them out. Especially when I hear they tarnishing my name and did something wrong after I loved on them for a little bit. Yeah. Sometimes I want to go at somebody and be like, you low life, dirty dog. I do. Sometimes I want to look at a person and be like, man, I can't believe that you would actually do that to me or say that or act that way. But when the conviction comes up, then I, my tears start to fall because God is saying pray. I'm telling you. I'm trying to tell you. There are some people I want to block on Facebook so bad. I want to disconnect and block your, 
no good, dirty, low down, blessed assurance self. But God says, keep them as a friend because they're still watching. And they may get something that may change them. They didn't receive from you when they had you in close quarters. They may receive from you because the gift has been removed from their lives. I'm just being honest. I got to fight this thing too. You follow me? But I've learned how to fight. So I'm your coach to teach you how to fight. So the word of God is living and active, sharper than two-edged swords, okay? Look what it does. It divides, watch this now. You got to pay attention to what it divides now. It divides the soul and the spirit. See, you got you to separate that thing. You can't have your soul intertwined with your spirit. You got to have your spirit intertwined with your soul. But if you notice, it puts soul first. Because God knows that people, we struggle in the area of our souls. Somebody say wisdom. Talk to me. It says that we separate soul and spirit. Joints and marrow. Watch this now. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intentions of the heart. My God in heaven. Woo-wee. Me. Let me sit down. You see what it says? It's a discerner of the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Okay. All right. I can bring it home now. This is why convictions are important. Because God is judging your convictions. Okay. God knows how, how, how challenging it is to say no to your flesh. He knows it. So when you say no to your flesh, he honors that. So he gives you a reward for saying no to your flesh. It's called the good life. The good life comes when you honor your spirit and say no to the flesh. In other words, temptation comes and you know you're about to do something you should not do. And what you choose to do is run out the house. And not stay into that bad situation. You follow what I'm talking about? Okay, I'm talking about Joseph who ran from Potiphar's wife. If you don't understand. Praise God. We got, we got the kingdom children. So we got to keep a little clean. You got me? So, so what I'm saying is when temptation talk to me. It says in Genesis chapter 4. It, God told Cain that temptation is crouching at your door. Oh, my God. Can I teach you? Can I teach you? Okay, listen to what I'm talking about. Temptation is very patient. Can I go for Can I go there? Temptation is a patient thing. It would sit and wait. It would sit and wait and wait and wait. And it would wear you out. You see me? I'm in, I'm in position. I'm in position. It would sit and wait because it knows that if you give it an ounce of attention, that you would open the door that was not. So when somebody knocks on your door, you go, you hear knock, knock. You should ask, you should say, who's there? Just don't open the door. Come on, Baba, keep your phone in your hand, girl. All right. <laughs> Listen, you get, you get, you get knock, knock. You should say, who's there? It's going to say, temptation. Temptation who? Tempt your way out of here. And so, and so, and so, so, so what keeps temptation at bay is the conviction. You got it? But there is no conviction without the word. Because it's the word that convicts. You can't convict. You don't have it in you to convict. I can prove it to you. My son was four years old. And he took his, his sister's toy at two. 
And I'm looking at him saying, where's the toy? Do you have it? And he says, no, I don't. I don't have it. It's right behind his back. Now, who taught him to lie? Who taught him to say, no, I don't? And he knew where to put it behind his back. Who told him to put it behind his back? You follow me? So, so we don't have to learn how to do wrong, but we must always learn consistently how to do right. See, see, you don't have to go, you, you don't have to go to school to learn wrong. See, that's why church is needed. Because you're sitting next to someone, and I want to be openly tell you that we are a body. If you see me do something wrong, knock on my head. Tell me. I want to hear it. It says open rebuke is better than secret love. That's Proverbs 27, I think. I'm not sure. I, 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 you know, I'm flowing. But open rebuke is better than secret love. You follow me? So, so what I'm saying is, when God rebukes you, he's rebuking you to keep you from opening the door to the thing that's crouching at the door. See, see, he told Cain that sin is sitting, squatting at your door. Okay, five more minutes and I'm done. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. Is this good? Are y'all ready for 2023? Okay. On social media, do you guys, are you guys enjoying this? If you are, can I get some thumbs or something? You guys, be engaged. Don't, just don't sit there. Let me know that you are engaged in social media because we are engaging you. Matthew chapter 5 verse 28. And I'm going to go to verse 30, okay? But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman... To lust. Now, looking is one thing, but to lust is something different. I can look at a woman and be like, she's beautiful. That's it. You recognize that's a beautiful looking woman. That's a good looking man. That's a, that's a nice outfit. That's a nice car. It's a nice house. You got eyes. My wife, one time, uh, we was in, in the salon and she, she's real comfortable with me. Talking to someone, and she said, uh, you know so-and-so, he real handsome. I said, wow. <laughs> Let me sit down. <laughs> Let me sit down on this one. She didn't say he was handsome. She said real handsome. <laughs> and you know, you know... <laughs> And she, I mean, she kept going like she never said nothing. And I was like, okay. How do I take that? Then I said, she's real comfortable with you. I said, well, praise God. She knows that I'm, I'm secure. So I kept it moving. But it did sting initially. Because I didn't hear handsome. I heard real. And I was wondering, did she ever call me real? I know she... I don't know, like, I've, I've heard cute before. I, I've heard cute, but I don't know since I've known her if, if I ever heard. So I'm kind of, I'll talk to you about that later. because we gotta, Okay, all right. I, I need healing in that area. I need healing. Lord, heal me. Heal me, Lord. All right, I'm healed. All right. <laughs> Praise God. Look what it says. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her. Where? Okay, let's keep going. Verse 29. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Now, before you, before, before you grab a knife, before you grab a knife, he's not saying to literally... Pluck it out. All right? Don't, 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 don't come to church on the first with a patch. I did not tell you to pluck out your right eye. He's not saying that. All right? He's saying monitor your eyes. Okay? 
<laughs> Listen. Pluck it out and cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. Verse 30 is my last scripture. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off, right? And cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than your whole body to be cast into hell. You got it? Okay. There's no cutting or, uh, or plucking if you submit to convictions. All right? Now, you will not submit to convictions if you don't put the word in you. All right? It's the word that convicts you because when the word gets in you, the word is actually the Holy Spirit. Okay? And so the Holy Spirit is the governing system that God put in the earth to convict all humanity. All humans. All humans. When people do wrong, they plot it out. And they think of ways to do it and not get caught. So that must mean that they were fighting a conviction and they overrode it. In other words, if I'm going to go steal from the bank, I'm just going to walk in there and do it. I'm not going to go in there with a mask on. I put the mask on because the mask shows that I'm doing something wrong. Because if I was doing, if I was doing the right thing, then why cover your identity? Just do it. In other words, you're going to cheat on your, your mate. So you have a different phone and you put the phone in the trunk. Well, if, if, if you're going to do the right thing, put the phone on the table and say, baby, I'm cheating on you. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? For you to think, it shows that you made the choice for wrong when right is present. That's what I'm saying. You know you do it wrong if you got to plot, plot it out. When they go to these, to, 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 to these schools and businesses and start the shooting, they plan the whole thing out. And they plan it the best way to do it so that they won't get caught. So if you know that you may get caught, then you must know that it's wrong because you're plotting to do it and not get caught. Praise God. This is what we're doing for 2023. And, you know, I, I tell you, I, I really hope that we grow and mature into this. And I'm, I'm, I'm just called, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm called to, to be someone to bring correction to his, to his body. I do it without judgment. I do it with love. I don't judge anybody. I don't qualify to judge anybody. Just as Jesus never judged. Judgment, judgment is not a daily thing. Judgment is a one-time occurrence. It's called Judgment Day. Did you, hear, did you hear what I said? It's not called Judgment Daily. It's not called Judgment Week. It's not called Judgment Month. It's called Judgment Day. It's a one day. However, you are being judged by your actions. So God has not judged you, but your actions are judging you. And when you ignore the convictions, those things are judging you. So praise God, he never judged you. And guess what? If you ask for forgiveness, he don't, not, he don't see a day wrong with you. Man. So we serve a God who never judged you. And if you ask for forgiveness, he don't know what you did wrong. Because it's gone. Isn't that wonderful? That you can, you are in relationship with the God who would wipe your record clean based on a simple conversation. Father, forgive me. Isn't that wonderful? But you have to have enough in you to judge yourself. And I pray that us as the church body, we grow to that. So that we can be mature and experience all that God has for us. Amen. Amen. And so Father, I gave your wisdom. I gave your revelation and I gave your truth. And I thank you, Lord, that the word has been sown. And, and uh, we thank you that all of these words that you're giving us is preparing us for 2023. And Father, as you have given us, 2023 is the year of Gimel. It's the year of pay, decade of pay. And this is the, the best year of our lives. And so, Father, we ask you to increase and intensify our convictions. Father God, 
we've asked you that you would help us to have a, a stronger level of discernment pointing us in the right direction and not uh, having us go in the direction of destruction in Jesus name amen so it's time for communion guys hallelujah this is our last communion of the year so we have more than one tray right all right let's pass it let's go up and down the rows with the trays now pass the trays pass the entire tray pass the entire trays oh they do okay if they do let me let me have mine I need one right can I have one please I need one thank you thank you sir thank you sir all right so guys we <clears throat> we have had a tough year we had a challenging year we have had an empowering year we have had a breakthrough year and this is our last time to do communion in this year and I just want us to connect with all that God has done in our lives in this year. It is his body and his blood that kept us another year. He kept us through the storm. He kept us through the challenges. He kept us through the, the giving up and the frustration. Oh, man, he kept us. And so, Father, you kept us. You kept us. And Lord, we are so grateful as we embarked on the end of this year, as we step into this new year, that Father, we acknowledge the, your body that kept us healthy. Your body kept us strong. Your body kept us, the sickness and diseases away. Your body paid the price for us this year. Oh, you were broken for us this year. And Father, we are standing on reaping the benefits of your broken body. Oh, Father, the splinter in your body. The nails in your feet. The nails in your hands. God, the spear in your side. It kept us safe this year. Oh, my God, Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, that in this year, we just bathe in the truth that you kept us. We are your kept children. You kept us. You kept us. You kept us away from destruction, the calamity. You kept us from every divine, wicked plot of the enemy. You kept us, oh God. Oh, no weapon that's formed against us prospered in this year, God. And so, Father, we as a body take the acknowledgement of your body. You broke the body of your son for our betterment and our fulfillment. And so, Father, we thank you. As we partake of your body, we thank you that every joint, come on, every ligament, every organ, every muscle, every tendon, every bone, every cell in my body is perfected for you. My body is for God and God is for my body. My body is the temple of Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so the blood, what the blood does is, the blood paid the price for sin. The blood breaks the back of all sins. The blood breaks the back of every curse. The blood, man, the blood did it all. And so, Father, we thank you for your blood. It is your blood that paid the price. It is your blood that makes all things right. It is your blood that keeps us in good standings with you. It is your blood that has us like Moses. We are strong with no dim in our eyes. It is your blood that has us aging in reverse. It is your blood, Father God, that keeps the hand of the enemy away. It is your blood that supplies every single need and grants us our heart's desires. We bless you, God. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. We bless your holy name. If you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, or if you need to have a rededication of who he is in your life, repeat after me. Say, Lord, I thank you for Calvary. I thank you that you died for me and rose on the third day. Lord, thank you for forgiving me. Lord, thank you for breaking all commonalities with the enemy. Lord, thank you for setting me free. Hallelujah. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed service today. Was it good? I'm going to be teaching more on that level to give greater understanding as God graces me to go deeper in teaching and revelation, okay? Um, this year is the best year of your life. I decree it. You guys go out and have an amazing Christmas. If nothing else, you have something to be grateful for, and that's Jesus. Because we say it all the time, but it's the truth. He is the reason for the season. Not the gift, he is the gift. Praise God. That's why he came wrapped up. Go get me started. He is the gift. And so let's unwrap Jesus today, tomorrow, and on Christmas Day. And my desire is that we unwrap Jesus every single day. Hallelujah. Raise your hands for the blessing. Don't forget, we're going to see you guys online for Christmas Day. Now make sure you have on your pajama, your coffee and tea next to you. And we want to see your picture, if you don't mind, in the comment section. Because I want to see, see who have on the best pajama and nightgown. Praise God. I tell you what, you ain't going to out pajama me. I tell you that. Praise God. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. And may the Lord grant you his perfect shalom, his peace. Now, may the peace of God that transcends all understanding guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Katrina and I love you all with the love of Christ. We're going to see you Tuesday for Bible study and see you next Tuesday online for uh, service. Guys, go out there and just don't, just don't walk around with no awareness. Let the conviction rule your life. Amen? We love you guys here and online. And also, if you guys want to partner with us, if you believe that we are a ministry that you can grow with and grow from, online, send us a message. And um, we are we looking for you know forward to growing with you. And also in here, if you're not partnered with this ministry, and you want to partner with us, let's make that happen. And if you said yes to Jesus, there's a phone number to call eight zero four five nine two something. What is it? What is it? Zero. What is it? One nine zero one. If you said yes to Jesus today, or had a rededication, uh, call eight zero four five nine two one nine zero one. We want to pray with you and uh, have a conversation with you. Amen? All right. See you guys. God bless you.